record. Boom! There we are! We are live now on... Uh, well, hopefully this will be on YouTube, and hopefully you'll be watching this on YouTube. But, welcome to the channel, welcome back, hey, whatever, you know, nailed it, great intro. Uh, <laughs> moving on. I will have an intro one day, I think, but yeah, that day is not today. Anyway, today's internet oddity is definitely a different one. Um, it's kind of like a rise and fall story of an e-celebrity still, but the title is not clickbait and it's not um, hyperbole. The man we are talking about today called himself a superhero and uh, for the most part he really did act like one so yeah the question that we probably are going to be asking throughout this is did he take his vigilantism a little too far many people would say so but it's actually the hypocrisy of his actions and conduct without the mask on that would be his downfall in the end and just totally shatter his public image but we'll get there um, this is a man who, might I just say, I think set out with good intentions, but due to a series of unfortunate events, stupid mistakes, and probably a load of other variables that are missing out, he ended up becoming the very thing that he dedicated pretty much a decade to fighting. Um, it's probably the closest that we will ever see to a real-life superhero, like a Batman-like superhero. Um, because this is somebody who took fighting crime very seriously in his home state of Seattle that at one point and during the time that he was mostly active had over a hundred percent more crime than the national average so it's safe to say that the help was needed I mean in an ideal world we wouldn't even be talking about uh, a rise and a fall it'd just be a rise but um, it's really true in today's case, cliche alert, you're either a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. <laughs> I didn't even want to put that in, but it really is true, like it could not be more true. So let's dive into the story and lay a bit of groundwork. Work, 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 work. So, the story goes, Phoenix Jones, the persona, was born after the man behind the mask's car was broken into, um, and his son basically hurt his hand on some glass, and then within the same week, he witnessed a serious assault. This was, like, back in 2010, um, and basically nobody did anything to help with this assault. The police took ages. It was um, not a nice thing to, obviously, witness. Um, and this basically caused the, caused the birth of the persona Phoenix Jones. Uh, if you don't know, phoenixes are commonly used to signify rebirth in mythology and symbolism. Um, and Jones is a common last name in the, the states at least and is a nod to the average Geordie. Um, we will get to know the man behind the mask a little later, but just like as of yet, nobody actually knows who he is, but we'll get there. Whoever this mystery figure is, however, he did take crime fighting so seriously that he went to develop a full costume. But this is no ordinary outfit, and it's clear that he wasn't trying a fancy dress. Donning a black and gold mask with a black breastplate, which consisted of dragon skin brand bulletproof vest and stab plating. Um, honestly, the, the, the whole costume is insane in itself, and I could do a video on that. But it was made by one company, effectively, then sent to a specialist company to like, reinforce it and in total it cost a staggering of 10k $10,000 um, and then there was added equipment including like a stun baton uh, pepper spray and tear gas sometimes handcuffs and like a first aid kit and he often used uh, many of these in his altercations and he would eventually go on to live stream his adventures on I think YouTube but I'm not sure about that it is on YouTube now but it's mainly due to I think re-uploads um, but anyway you can go still see that but it was a fully he was fully prepared um, he had a, actually also had a solid MMA record of 11 wins and no losses it was an amateur record mind you and he went under the name flat top but i've watched some of those fights and the guy is pretty ruthless like i would not like to mess with him although i'm not exactly a big hard nut i still think the guy knew what he was doing he could fight you know safe to say that phoenix jones was ready to get busy like he was ripped straight from a movie he played the role very well and he nailed the bit um, so starting out, like, he remarked in an interview later on that he didn't actually know where to begin and used to go climbing up like to the tops of buildings, looking down alleys and stuff, naively like the movies, in his words. Uh, then he finally did actually catch something on the top of these rooftops. And um, in his words again, he says that it took him like 10 minutes to get down and of course everything was over and done. The purple's long gone, um, you know, a little bit... 
Um, a little bit cliche, but um, yeah. It also recounts the story in, in the early days when he had like a, a Spider-Man like net launcher thing, um, and he was trying to um, pursue someone presumably, and um, he'd launched the thing, and it ended up basically just tangling him up. So a cop were actually seen him, a police officer actually seen him tangled up, and literally laughed, took pictures of him, and then helped him out. So it took a while for him to master his craft, and turned out finding the crime was probably just as hard as actually fighting it but he gradually did become more extreme with it um and I, I guess he kind of realized that it was the crazy shit like intimidating drug dealers getting involved in knife fights with people and um all this like kind of other crazy stuff that was the stuff that got people talking and he really really liked the media attention um, so eventually, like, he did start to find some crime and started to do some pretty positive things. Like, he put himself in some mad situations that, like, most people just wouldn't dream of. It's, like, situations that, for anybody else, it's kind of like a, a personal horror story, you know? Um, but he was going out there, literally putting himself in these positions every other night. Um, with a particular emphasis on drug dealers as he saw them as like a huge part of the problem and kind of why the society that he was living in and his community was so bad in the first place. But he started to make a, a name for himself in like local news and stuff and it was around about 2011-ish, 2010, late 2010 that his notoriety started to grow or at least was born, like people started to know about him a bit. Because... On one mild night on the 2nd of January in 2011 in Linwood, Seattle, which looks like a beautiful place, mind you, um, Jones was out uh, one night on his beat in the early hours of the morning, and he basically spotted a car theft in progress, sprung into action like any good superhero would do, but the prevention of the, um, sorry, he didn't end up actually catching him, he scared the guy away and did stop the crime, but he didn't catch him, sadly, uh, but the prevention of the crime was enough for a CBS, or local CBS affiliate station, to pick up the story, and the next day, the, the pair was united, and the nearly victim, because <laughs> he wasn't, didn't quite get his car broken in, but he was called Dan, uh, basically thanked um, Phoenix Jones, like on camera, they had a little chat about his suit and stuff, it was pretty wholesome, I couldn't actually find that clip sadly, but I did see it in another documentary, so I do know that, that did happen, um, but anyway, this was, this is also cited as one of the times that he was like, really featured on camera, um, obviously CBS and stuff, it was a bit of a big deal, over the next few months, um, Jones would appear in more new stuff, Stories. It seemed that CBS, or this local affiliation of CBS, but we're just going to call him CBS, took an interest and decided they were going to platform him. Um, I suppose Jones was very well spoken and quite respect respectful, for the most part at least, in his interviews. And this, as you can imagine, helped his popularity grow. Um, combined with his regular street appearances, Jones was becoming a bit of a local celebrity, really playing into this Batman-like persona that he'd created for the cameras and played into it he did. In one CBS broadcast about Jones, he was basically shown entering a back room of an unnamed comic book store, sliding out from behind a, a bookcase, acting in, as like a secret door, he, like coming out in full costume. People were loving it, like the what? So, you know, like the TV station played it up, Jones played it up um but uh, for the most part like it were kind of all right but um yeah it was getting more popular and you know how it goes with popular does come a little bit of hate so that started to also happen at this point too um you see the thing is people like dressing up in like cosplay and stuff is no new thing people doing that and then going out and helping like the homeless people and stuff and doing like genuinely really good things in the community but not kind of what Jones were doing is a thing as well, especially in like Seattle where homelessness is also a bit of a crisis. Um, but Jones took the like the crime fighting part very, very seriously. And this is where um, his brand was sort of, uh, this is what his brand was sort of most known for. Um, and w at one point, uh, it literally laying on a hospital bed from a stab wound, he made the remark that oh, these other brand of uh, superheroes um, were basically he called them sandwich handlers. Obviously, a derog derogatory term to imply that all they do is give out sandwiches to homeless and they don't actually do any real good. Um, so yeah, I mean, he literally said that from a hospital bed, mind you, so you can see his grievance, but 
Um, Jones obviously saw himself a cut above the rest, and he made that distinction uh, early. Uh, made that distinction very early on, but he wasn't the only person doing this hero thing. Um, and the people he was calling sandwich handlers were pretty upset about that. This, you know, was obviously meant to be a, a, a insult almost. So um, these sort of other people, these you know, the wider community of superhero Samaritans, kind of started to dislike him, which probably isn't great. But anyway, in July of uh, 2011, I think this is, um, the Rain City superhero movement was announced shit really happened a, a team of 10 superheroes that patrolled the streets of seattle led by none other than our own phoenix jones um it would seem as though jones had inspired like-minded people all to collaborate under one team um despite the growing discontent among some um but all with the common goal of you know basically protecting the streets um of seattle on a night so yeah this is where things really did start to pick up for for jones and it spelled the the golden years, but it didn't come without its crutches. So one thing is for sure, they were all incredibly coordinated, at least in the early days. There were some live streams available to watch, like I've mentioned. And, um, you know, these guys went out with radios, were in teams, they all had medics on the team. Everyone had a dedicated role. Uh, some had, like, were, were just dedicated to the, doing the live stream. Others were in forces, like others were, like, the medic, as I say. Uh, they'd all check in with each other regularly. And they had a strong focus on good relations with law enforcement. But this wasn't easy. Um, sadly, they was actually asked to stop by the sheriff's office, who basically said nobody should insert themselves into a situation and just call the cops, let them do the job. But anyway, it didn't deter him, and he did kind of try his best, I suppose. They did try their best. Um, and it did seem like, at least in my opinion, that they was trying to do it somewhat safely and legally, most importantly. But, of course, you probably already know, it's a very, very fine line. Like, um, you know, they were basically performing citizen's arrests on people. And although, like, across the world, citizen's arrests... So when you get into the weeds of the law, it does differ. But generally speaking, it is really, really difficult to execute a lawful citizen's arrest. Like, uh, generally speaking, it's actually advised against. Nobody would really tell you to do that because you can very f easily face legal troubles afterwards if you are very, very careful. And even if you are very, very careful, you can still face legal troubles and end up being the one getting arrested. So yeah, they were kind of dancing on the fence of what's already considered to be illegal or illegal. And the sheriff's office had already openly disavowed the conduct. So something bound, bad was bound to happen and it eventually did, of course. So, um, causing a, 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 it basically caused like, caused like a chain, um, a chain of events that basically changed the course of Phoenix Jones' life forever as well. So, it's kind of sad. This is where it starts to get a little rocky. But, um, out one night while, uh, superheroing, as we would call it today, Phoenix basically saw what appeared to be a street fight and, uh, he'd, what he assumed spilled out from, like, a local bar, as was common in the area at the time, of course. Phoenix charged into battle, uh, ready to serve and protect, but he was sadly mistaken and he charged into a group of drunk teenagers that were just messing about with each other and having a bit of fun, drunk, but from their point of view, some masked man like just came out of nowhere, started to get physical with everyone, so like, they retaliated. Um, which is considered to be within the bounds of the law in Seattle under self-defense. Um, surprisingly, these people fighting back with Jones didn't calm the situation down. Jones pulled the mace out, went to town, um, and in the police report afterwards, it, it was even stated that there was a strong smell of mace in the air when they arrived. But I do have a clip of this part, however. So let me, let me show you a little clip. It's kind of hard to make out to a certain extent. But um, you get a good picture of what, like, they were at least up to. But right, so shout out to Ryan McNam Productions because this is the guy who filmed this dude. But check this shit. Pretty wild. So that's Phoenix there in the yellow suit. So he basically goes flying in, break it up. Oh, 
Oh, now the ladies. Oh, it ain't doing. It does look like a fight, though. To be fair, doesn't it? Holy shit! She switched rapid. <laughs> oh shit! Ooh, about that. Hurt. Ow, on me. Ooh, damn. Now even cameraman's getting slapped up. I think he's like are on a rampage to be fair. <laughs> that's that's Phoenix there and he's got his mace in his hand. The beast of a suit though, that isn't it? Can y'all see that all right? That's Jones, uh... Kicks off in a second. Like proper kicks off. It doesn't look like they're doing anything wrong though at this point, does it? I mean, ah, uh, there's that, there's that chick in the in the uh, the the red pants that was slapping everyone though. Stay away from us, stay away from us. That's uh, Phoenix saying that. Ooh, yeah, look, so they are, they're coming to attack, man. Do you hear that spray? What? It is spraying off, man. But he's got a few of them onto him now. But, oh, it was like a million Scoville pepper spray as well. It was like proper ruthless pepper spray that he used. I mean, that shit can't have been nice for anybody that got sprayed by that. It was pretty big though. There were a few people there then. He just said, oh, they're like teenagers. Fifteen. It's a fairly long clip. This so I don't want to leave. It. I don't want to have it on for too long. So eventually, the cops do end up coming, but you see there look uh, sorry as you can see there look it's been like 25 minutes now cops are there mind you so, so they've arrived on site now right okay cool so um i'll just put low fire back on is that playing there we go why is it doing that for Oh, I think it was the song. Right, okay. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, that was like a, a regular, that was a regular night, effectively, for, for Jones. Um, 
kind of what it was like all the time. But anyway, this was interestingly the second incident of that night where Jones was involved in something where he, he let off the pepper spray and the police called the previous altercation excessive use of pepper spray. So um, I'm sure that also had an influence on what happened next. But as a result of that very incident, Phoenix Jones was arrested on assault charges um, and the state was... Uh, gonna make an example of him effectively um, but later he actually bailed out and um, uh, it, after spending only a matter of hours in a jail cell um, yeah it, it didn't nothing actually happened to him there was gonna make an example of him there was gonna the, try to but yeah there was nothing really there effectively so um, it was in jail for a few hours he did spend some time in a jail cell uh, <clears throat> obviously at this point the local media had picked up the story and um, as he emerged from uh, jail, still in his full costume, because that's what he got locked up in, uh, it was greeted by a mob of hungry reporters, and uh, Jones caused a feeding frenzy. So I've got another little clip for you here. I think the best way for me to to just show you how crazy this all, all was is just to show you it. So, yeah, basically, um, after all this shit, next day, kind of, or that, that night, he kind of gets locked up. And this is what happens. <laughs> I'm Phoenix Jones. I'm also Ben Coder. Uh, I also step your city. I also am a father. I also am a brother. You know, I'm just like uh, everyone else. The only difference is that um, I decided to make a difference and stop crime in my neighborhood and my area. I intend to keep making that difference. Uh, the charges will fall. Uh, the video shows that. The court hearing shows that. You know, I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm on the Sorry, this was after court. Yeah, sorry, that one after prison, that was after court. Um, hours before standing trial, for four counts, Phoenix Jones box for some. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, that's the next clip. Awesome. That's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Right, so, whew, as you can see there, that is quite the spectacle. Uh, th that was. Basically, the first time that anybody had seen his face, like, uh, obviously outside of his close friend group, of course. Um, as he proclaims, his name is Benjamin Fodor, father of two, uh, a crime-fighting superhero most nights, but actually a daycare worker for kids with special needs throughout most days. Um, it's not entirely certain why he did, like, the whole unmasking thing. Possibly because the records of his offence would become public anyway, and people would have found out if they wanted to, like, either way. But our story doesn't end here. Despite being publicly known, as you heard there, he continued to fight uh, crime under the persona of Phoenix Jones, and he actually doubled down. This might have been influenced by his sudden work termination from said daycare centre, sadly. But um, I did manage to uh, find some news clips of him appearing here and there. Um, and there's some really interesting back and forths that appear. So um, I'd like to share those with you if that's okay. Um, I know I'm showing you a shitload of clips today. But I think it does. It serves as a quite an, in, quite an interesting look into... Uh, just like Phoenix Jones as the, as the as the character, right? And he's going on about his vest.
So this Joey Jackson is a, a, a famous prosecutor for superheroes, I think. So he's, I think that means it must mean that he's prosecuted a few of these same superheroes. Sorry. Here's the problem, and listen, Phoenix, I love what you do, I think you're a courageous man, and we want to see you around for a long time, and it's for that reason that you have to stop doing it. <laughs> I find that funny. Look, you don't have adequate equipment to do it, there's a training issue, and there's a, the fact that there's not legal authority to do it. Furthermore, whenever you inject yourself into an issue, there's always the problem that could get worse, and that is people can make true intentions, people, it can escalate the situation, and it's for that reason wow. that the DA has to take a stand. Now, I'm not saying what it could be life in prison without parole, but at the same time, there needs to be some type of uh, assessment done by the DA so that other copycats don't right. come out here. We have a lawless society. I'm going to let Joey obviously have to point. represent as many superheroes as I have, for starters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he's represented superheroes, sorry. See, this is why I put this in. It's a good, good back and forth. Gives all aspects of it. <laughs> I like that. He's a cool dude. I think that's a good, a good little uh, back and forth there that they all have with each other. Right, so that's next clip. Oh, you're not allowed to see that yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, pretty wild, pretty wild. Um, the audio on the video is kind of low. I'm really sorry about that silk kit. It was as high as I could possibly get that then. Um, I do apologise though if that was a little bit low. Um, yeah, um, it was as loud as I could get that, I think, anyway. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, everything's everything's uh, everything was up loud. So I'm sorry about that. I thought it was a little low. Um, 
But, um, so, anyway, the question of vigilantism is obviously a glaring one in this case, and that was basically what a lot of the back and forth was. Um, and it is very understandable to un to land on either side of the fence. I mean, he was doing a lot of good in his community and really making a stance on the matter. But it's important to remember that in somewhere like Seattle, where the crime is said to be so high, it's easy to see why people would also cheer that kind of thing on. Uh, again, at the same time, knowing how dangerous this obviously is and how ultimately actions like this do damage many crim criminal cases and uh, how good Samaritans can often find themselves in criminal cases, literally as the offender, like Phoenix Jones did there, it's um, hard to dispute, um, you know, that it, it's kind of a, a tricky one and it can really go wrong. But uh, Jones' stance uh, was a strong one, appealing to people's morality, and it worked on some for sure, as seen. Um, the lady was basically very on Phoenix's side. The man was kind of basically just saying, um, you know, do you not think that there's better ways that you can serve, that you serve your community? Do you really think that being a superhero is the best way? And Phoenix was basically like, yeah, I do think a super, being a superhero is the best way. Um, it's no different to kind of um, Good Samaritans putting on a Green Beret sort of thing and going out and helping the community. He said that he, he revealed himself and pulled like the mask up because he was, the, the DA was charging him as Phoenix Jones because he was Phoenix Jones, because he was this superhero figure and because um, of that he was getting charged. If it was, um, Phoenix said in that interview there, if he was a regular person um, and maced somebody that was, you know, um, trying to attack somebody else, he'd have got a handshake and been told to, you know, enjoy the rest of his day sort of thing. But because he was in this like costume and stuff, they charged him with assault. So, um, yeah, it, it was like a double statement that, you know, um, it, it, it was basically been charged because of the suit, but the person underneath the mask was the one who was going to be ultimately suffering from it. Um, so that's basically what happened in that. Sorry if you couldn't hear that too much. I do apologise. Um, but with all this, anyway, a bunch of um, fame obviously came with, with all these appearances and also a lot of hate. And many um, many was very outspoken by this point, like his detractors, they were getting very loud. Um, we are well into 2012 by this point and the Rain City superhero movement is in full swing. They're basically doing what they can around the city, live streaming lots of it. Uh, these were definitely the golden years, but um, many point to... A particular incident that I'm going to show you soon has been the start of like his downfall. So he ended up catching some heat for something in Oct October of that year, 2012, when he hit the headlines again. But this time it really did leave people divided. Um, and I'll quickly give you a rundown of just the situation, a bit of context. So Jones, whilst out on patrol, encountered a group of rowdy bar patrons in attempt to calm them down, he ended up getting into an altercation, Jones did, with like one of these drunken bar patrons. Um, this time though, what happened is um, it was like a mutual combat agreement um, to have a fight. So it was basically a fight that both parties had agreed to um, and it was also under the supervision of the police. So yeah, um, I'm not sure having the police there is even a, requ a requirement, but um, they were there for his fight. Um, a mutual sort of combat thing is a, a proper law in Seattle. You're allowed to do that if both parties agree. Um, you know, like it's a legal thing that can happen in the street. Um, I think it actually dates back to like the 18th century and it's like a dual kind of law. It's a really weird law. But um, anyway, so yeah, it gets into this mutual combat agreement fight with this dude. And I'll show you the clip. It's kind of wild. It's not like really graphic or anything, so don't worry about that. It's just more like a little bit of an MMA fight. Like I say, the police are there, so. So it's this guy in the orange here. And appara apparently the guy in the orange would have been racist. The audio is pretty bad though, it's hard to hear to be fair. Really old video and all this is ripped from live streams you see. So they're basically arguing there, sorry. Um, Phoenix is trying to walk away saying have a good day. Walk away, Phoenix is saying. 
Stop calling me. Let's go, guys. So, it looks like they're about to go now. He goes, I know you want to come back, the guy in the orange. I know you want to come back. I hate people, Phoenix says. <laughs> so, this is a... It's kind of getting a bit worn out, I I think, at this point. Getting a bit sick of people's shit sort of thing. Which ain't a good attitude at all. I'm trying to listen out for the remark that happens. The ring in 911. Phoenix Jones and the team. He's with his team now and they're live streaming this. Says something about a superhero and then laughs. The guy in the orange. So Phoenix goes, Washington's a mutual combat state. If you want to agree to fight, I'll, I'll fight you. Under the laws of Washington state. Suspect's ready to fight. Cops arrived. So cops are here now, as you can see, obviously. It's a really bad video, this though, because I say it's a, not, it's a live stream from 2012. Um, so now he's just telling cops basically that they're going to have a fight, I think. I can't hear what's going on there myself. One of us falls, that's the law. We stop, or something like that, he's saying. This guy, a guy in orange is saying, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Come on, come on. Sorry, it's a bit long, but I think the context bit before is also important to see. He's literally... He's saying to him it's ridiculous. He goes, if he wants to fight, I agree. So this guy's saying the guy in the orange is gonna take take you all out. <laughs> saying you guys stay here. Phoenix is saying you lot all stay here. I agree. It's ridiculous. Phoenix says. If you both want a why not? He says. That guy's the copper. He's saying, be the better person, walk away. Can't make out what's getting said there. That, guy, that guy's saying, do you want it? Do you both want it? Copper's talking. To Phoenix, that's Phoenix there. That's the guy in the orange I'm talking about. Audio quality is really bad. There's like 20 of them all shouting over each other too. <clears throat> Sorry about that.
If you want to, I want to, Phoenix is saying. Don't know what they're saying. <coughs> Talking smack. Saying, fuck it, let's do it then. Right, now it's going, now it's getting started. So Phoenix is in black, obviously. <sighs> God, got a leg kick and half of that. Sorry, it's a bit far away. That's it. Suspect is down. Mutual combat is over. <laughs> this guy's. <laughs> this guy seriously thinks he's going to be able to bang him out after that. This guy's a loud ass dude, man. Jeez. Now they're off, look. Yeah, and now cops are dealing with them. So that's basically the end of that one. Um, so that was like marketed as um, uh, the, uh, the guy was like a racist apparently. Um, when, when the clip were going round initially, um, <clears throat> that's basically what people were saying. It were like um, the, these guys were being racist. I did definitely hear the N word getting shout out a lot there, but I don't know if it was being racist N word. Although the guy was white, um, it could have just been like you know, you're a joker, nig, you're a joker, you're a joker, you know, and people say it like that. Um, today I learnt mutual combat on the street in Seattle, in Seattle is a thing. Never knew that could... And I mean, the police were there, right? So you really can't argue with the guy. Um, and in in Phoenix's defence, he did try, like, um, you know, walk away and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, was it justice? Or was this foreshadowing for later events and accusations? Because it is around about this time that uh, Phoenix or Benjamin Fordor, Fordor would kind of start to fall apart and that clip kind of sums it all up because his ego basically started to get the better of him, his detractors would say. They were becoming more vocal at this point, he had way more people that wasn't happy with how he was handling things, saying that he was giving all of them a bad name sort of thing. Um, and that's why I say that clip did leave people divided because in one hand you've got these guys were obviously being obnoxious and loud and stuff, but there's one guy notably that says, um, you know, would would anybody in their right minds let an MMA fighter fight a drunk guy <laughs> that isn't an MMA fighter? Um, the, the obvious unfair balance there was kind of very glaring, in my opinion, in that fight. Um so yeah, you know, obviously being a proper MMA fight, trained MMA fighter and the guy was six foot five, Phoenix Jones, um, it, obviously people thought that he really shouldn't have done that, but I don't know, man, personally I don't know, I really don't on that one, it were obvious that the guy wanted to, but the other guy were intoxicated, um, I know there's a law over here in England at least, that if you sign any contract, Whilst intoxicated, that contract is void. So remember that. Anybody ever gets you in a contract that you don't quite want to sign, or if you're in the UK at least, to say, eh, I was drunk when I signed that. I have no idea what he's on about or they're on about. <laughs> so yeah, I shouldn't tell you that. That's a shitty pro-life tip for you. But anyway, um, 
obviously, like you can see, that was a bit of a bit of a crazy one. Um, it did stick to the book for the most part, but like I say, walking a very very fine line that many people at this point had thought he had crossed. Um, but up for debate, up for debate. Um, internal affairs also at this point was going incredibly wrong for the Rain City superhero movement. Um, like a lot of people were leaving, team members were leaving, people were coming, new people were coming, and the team members that were leaving were going to the internet and saying that basically Jones was an egomaniac behind the camera, he was this, he was that, um, like people do. But anyway, um, in 2014, so uh, just like, I think it was like three or four years that the Rain City superhero movement was a thing, um, in 2014 ceased to exist sadly. Um, sadly or not sadly, depending on obviously what what kind of the um, t stance you take on it all. But Jones went did go on to carry on uh, fighting crime in his persona for a while, but he never really made the headlines again. Um, and the rise um, kind of was over by this point. This was sort of becoming the fall, um, because at this point he'd never hit the headlines for anything good again. Sadly, it would hit the headlines again, but. Mm. So not much went on for Phoenix from uh, like 2014 to 2019 after the, the superhero movement were over. He did still have his supporters and he was spotted on patrol. Um, he did apparently still go on these, um, but he never really made the splash that he once did. Now, largely on his own too because like mo most of the team had kind of gone. Um, most of the people in the superhero community, as we've been calling them, um, basically didn't like him uh, with calling his actions reckless often. Um, some something that off, uh, Jones, as he's seen, refutes obviously. But um, yeah, again, it depends on how you look at this whole topic, uh, whether you see it as being reckless or not. But with the dawn of the new decade, uh, 2020, um, this is where we kind of see Jones pop back up again. Um, sadly, for the very thing though that he so openly hated for many years publicly. Um, you know, he became part of the, the people that he used to chase down and give beatdowns. Um, he sadly, or what people would say, would say at the time, he t sadly turned his back on the community and the people of Seattle. Um, because on January the 9th, 2020, Phoenix Jones, or at this point rather, Ben Fodor, was caught selling some methamphetamines to an undercover cop, of all people. Um, so first off, a quick, quick rundown. First off, what happened is um, he basically sold $300 worth. It was delivered to his Venmo account, which is ridiculous. He went and delivered it in a, a, a brown envelope. Um, yep, this customer, undercover police officer, and caught Fodor red-handed, totally banged to right selling Molly. Now, I mean, a lot of people d don't really care about what it was that he particularly sold, and a lot of people would say, um, in many other cases, Molly's Molly, it ain't hurting no one, right? But, again, that's another another argument altogether. <clears throat> but the sheer hypocrisy, um, that was kind of blatant, and it spoke for itself, and it was that that effectively did it for him. It, it could have been selling anything, really. It was illegally selling drugs, uh, something that he so vehemently opposed for many years, for a decade. So you can kind of see uh, the problem, can't you? Um, so yeah, um, you know, like people were pissed, man. None of his closest supporters really um, liked this, you know, like people had followed his adventures for nine, ten years and supported him in his times of need financially and emotionally because um, Phoenix Jones, or Ben Ford, or at least the bent man behind the mask, did go through a lot of personal battles along the way that we didn't really talk about here today because we've just been more focused on, like, um, Phoenix Jones' story. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, there's, uh, there was no excuse to these loyal fans. Like, there were, this was a full-blown scandal, and... Uh, at this point of recording and writing, it is unclear what punishment, as in criminal retribution, he's going to get, uh, if any. But um, sadly, his image and legacy will be forever tarnished with this um, quite horrible stain. Um, so, um, to end this, I would like to show you a quick fan, um, uh, sorry, a quick video made by one of Jones's closest fans that pretty much summarises how everybody feels about this situation. Um, 
<laughs> this guy, I think, followed him for eight years, I think. Um, he'd financially supported him. He'd gone fully, fully in with the guy and really tried to support his movement. Um, so this is um, this is the lovely Bloodfinger, everybody. Shout out to Bloodfinger um, <laughs> on, on YouTube. But yeah, this is what Bloodfinger had to say. I'll show you a little bit. I think you should be able to wear this a bit better. Because this was recent. This is still on YouTube, by the way. This is public. No copyright infringement intended on any of these clips. <laughs> right, so <laughs> I'll leave that there because I think that, that, that kind of gets that one, that one across, right? Uh, that is how everybody felt about him, to be honest, though. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, the end of Phoenix Jones's or Ben Fordor's story. Uh, this is the superhero that turned into a villain. Um, and yeah, I'm really sorry if I missed anything. I did try to make, uh, just get to the main points and make this one a little shorter than what other people's kind of videos on this w will be. Um, between this video, if you would like to hear any of my thoughts on the matter, you would have to join us on Twitch, uh, where this has been recorded live. If you feel that, that I've earned it, drop us a like, drop us a sub, we'll probably be doing more stuff like this in the future. Um, any engagement is obviously appreciated and it helps the channel out loads, but ciao for now on the video recording. Um, I'll give a quick shout out and thank you to everybody that watched on, on Twitch. Again, we're live on Twitch, Cloud 69 uh, shameless plug. But um, thank you again if you've watched all the, the, all the way through on YouTube as well. Again, any engagement is really helpful for a channel that has just like started. I know my content's been all over the place at the moment, but I do intend to stick to more stories like this. Uh, I guess like internet related stories, oddities if you like. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the recording. Um, ciao for now. I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you for watching.